Sydney residents have been hit with new rules that finally make masks mandatory for indoor venues as COVID infections spread further. Those who ignore the new order from Monday face a $200 fine. Robert Avadia is following these developments for us. Rob, some welcome news for the Northern Beaches though. Well, it certainly is with a sense of irony. The southern end of the Northern Beaches zone ends its isolation in lockdown and rejoins Greater Sydney on the very day the rest of the city has restrictions imposed. The major one, of course, is the mandating of wearing masks, essentially indoors at public venues such as uh, shopping centres, supermarkets, public transport and entertainment venues. Now that starts tomorrow and after a one day grace period, $200 fines can be imposed. That is for Monday. Now, Premier Gladys Berejiklian has been under a fair bit of pressure for some time to do this. She says the health advice suggested now is the right time. But we also need to reduce or mitigate the risk in certain settings where we know there's challenges. She's been dragged kicking and screaming into this but it is the right decision and as such I welcome it. There are also restrictions on numbers to prevent crowding. Gym classes are reduced to 30, places of worship, weddings and funerals are down to 100. Outdoor ticketed events are also being restricted but not the cricket test which we were told today is undergoing meticulous preparation at the SCG with plans to to herd patrons into zones which will be heavily policed. Now, the reason for the tight restrictions today, Barala was declared our third hotspot after Avalon and Croydon, so testing continues with a renewed focus on Western Sydney. Five of seven new cases are linked to the Barala cluster. Genomic sequencing may well determine how it started there, but those results will not be known until tomorrow. There are multiple testing locations. Um, and we are working very hard to scale those, open those clinics over extended hours. The red zone of the Northern Beaches will have to be patient. It will remain in lockdown for at least one more week. Thanks, Rob. Now, Victoria is battling a spike in COVID infections. Ten new cases of community transmission were recorded today. All are now linked to the virus outbreak in New South Wales. It's hitched a ride from New South Wales to Black Rock. Uh, we've yet to establish exactly the vehicle that it's done that, but we've established the science that that's what's happened. Authorities are on high alert with testing capacity urgently ramping up. Long queues and delays were seen at sites around the state, with some forced to close. Victoria's border with New South Wales has slammed shut as officials fear the spread of the virus. As Jodie Lee reports, many Victorians are now cut off from their own state. Well, it's eerily quiet here in Wodonga on the Victorian side of the border. There have been hardly any cars here throughout the day. Those that have trickled through this Victoria Police checkpoint are largely border residents who we are told have permission to travel across state lines. What we've seen here today is, of course, in stark contrast to the pictures of the last 24 and 48 hours as Victorians holidaying interstate raced home to meet last night's midnight deadline. Many of them waited for hours in queues that stretched for kilometres just to pass through these Victoria Police checkpoints. The advice from the Victorian government was very clear. Victorians holidaying interstate needed to be back here on home soil by midnight last night before the border with New South Wales was slammed shut. The cars that were in the queue at the turn of midnight were processed by police officers. But latecomers to the queue were turned away. They are now locked out of Victoria for no one knows how long. It could be a matter of weeks even months. For those Victorians that did manage to make it back in time, their journey is only now beginning. They wake up today on what is 14 days of mandatory home isolation. A New South Wales couple who fled Victoria Police on arrival at Melbourne Airport have been tracked down. The 26-year-old man and 24-year-old woman flew in from Canberra and bolted to avoid mandatory hotel quarantine. They later turned themselves in in Goulburn, New South Wales, and now face fines of at least $19,000 each. Queensland's border rules remain unchanged for now. The state government confirmed late this afternoon it won't shut out Victoria despite increasing concerns. Health authorities say anyone who's been in Victoria since December 21 should get tested immediately and isolate until they have a result.